Hey guys, how's it going? It's Bobby Kryptonite here, and welcome to another Rally Trent Tourist video. Now, the project pretty much ground to a halt in December after I made that last video about this bike, because we couldn't get the handlebars out, and I didn't want to risk damaging it because I actually bent the forks on the Rudge doing it, uh, getting its handlebars out, and the Rudge and the Trent are essentially the same bike, so I was expecting the same problems, but luckily managed to get it freed off so we can now take the forks out and get it properly disassembled so we can look at the frame and figure out how we're going to deal with the paintwork. Anyway, let's get this assembling. We're now going to turn our attention to getting the cotter pins out. Now we're going to use a trick that my dad discovered a while back. You'll need a socket that's bigger than the cotter pin head, a spanner, and a vise. What we're going to do is loosen the cotter pin nut until this face of the nut is flush with the threads, well with the end of the threads. That may not be possible in this case, but we'll try. Place the socket over this end of the cotter pin undo the nut a little and then put the nut and the socket between the jaws of the vise, tighten the vise up and that should get the cotter pin out. See how it suddenly got loose? That means we've moved the cotter pin. We have indeed. As you can see, we've got the crank off. I've never had the cranks off this bike. If you, if you remember, those of you who've been watching for a while, you'll remember that we did a mechanical overhaul on this bike in East, around about Easter 2014. And the one, th well, we didn't get into the planetary gears because I don't have any experience there whatsoever and I needed the bike to be roadworthy for university so I didn't want to go ripping that apart. And we never got into the bottom bracket because the cotter pins just wouldn't come off and we didn't know that trick then. So this is progress. We'll get the other side with the chain ring off and then we'll see about getting into this bottom bracket which I expect will be dry and horrible. Cranks are soon to be off with any luck. There we go. Spins not too badly but then again I've pumped a fair bit of oil in here over the years that I've had the bike because I was unable to re-grease the bearings, but it might be dry and there might be a lot of dirt in there. Okay, we managed to get this to loosen off, so we can now get this apart. This may well be the first time any of this has come apart since 1963, so prepare for the worst, viewers. Oh, what on earth? Oh well. A proper restoration should involve replacing all these balls anyway. I think some of the balls may well have just rolled down the down tube and that would be the rattle that you just heard. Because as far as I was aware, we haven't got that far. Now, there we go. Now we should be able to, yeah, they've all come, I think they've all gone rolling down the down tube of the frame. I can see them on the workbench. Or well, many of them have gone rolling down, but yes. Look how grubby that is. Not the worst, we, we've seen worse on newer bikes to be completely fair, but that's what is greeting us. 
Here's a handy little tip for restoration. Parts like these, like this bracket here, and there's another one on the seat tube, which we'll come to in a minute, they affect the tension in the gear cables, and therefore the performance of your gears. And there will be a right way to have it set up. So before dismantling, it's important to take a note of whereabouts it's located on, along the tube. What I'm going to do is use these digital calipers, got them zeroed, I'm just going to open them up and see whereabouts this is located. And the lugs on this frame are quite handy in that they're, they're there's a kind of a variation. So, go to that point in the lug there, to there, and it's saying 144.68 on the screen of the calipers. You should make a note of that on a bit of paper or on your phone. I've just said it in the video, so I'll use this clip as a reference, but I'll write it down later. Up here on the seat tube, we have a pulley wheel for feeding through the gear cable. And that actually might need replaced, that looks kind of worn out. Anyway, the distance from the bracket for the pulley wheel to the lug for the where the seat tube meets the top tube the gap is around 27 millimeters it doesn't have to be exact but it will give you a good idea of positioning 26 27 millimeters now that we've made a note of those positions we can remove those parts and we'll know where to reattach them when we come to put the bike back together so there we are apart from a few small items the disassembly of the Trent Tourist is complete now, the next thing to do is to give all the parts a good clean. That will help us to assess what we can reuse, what we're going to have to replace, etc. I'm going to figure something about, out about the paint because I want to have decals on this bike, try and keep it original, try and restore it. But nobody makes reproduction decals for this bike that I know of. So we might have to try and paint around the decals or find someone who'll make reproductions for us but it's not it's not going to be easy I'd like I really like this bike it's a keeper so I want to do things properly and do the bike justice so with that in mind we need to figure something out about the paint color and the decals and as for the mechanical parts we'll give them a good clean we'll rebuild moving parts we might have to get some rechroming done we're going to have to buy new wheel rims because one of them's dented and not very nice. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please give the video a like, follow me on Twitter, like the Facebook page, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Tatty bye!